Welcome to the discussion on decision making today which is chapter 20 of the series of lectures that we are having. In this chapter we are going to consider some of the important aspects of decision making. Firstly, we want to see what is decision, what are the different types of decision, what are the different decision making processes. What are the behavioral influences on decision making, different decision making styles, group decision making, we will try to concentrate on creativity in decision making, types of organizational decision making processes, we will also focus on contingency framework for using decisional models, tools for decision making and we go for a systematic approach to decision making. We will try to focus also on the constraints of decision making and cultural differences in decision making. This whole span of discussion will be spread through two lecture sessions. In the first lecture we are going to concentrate on the first few topics of like from knowing what are the different types of decisions to decision making process, behavioral influences and the different decision making styles. So, before we try to discuss about what are the different types of decision, firstly we need to know what is a decision and why do we need to decide. Like when we are talking of what is a decision, then we can understand it is where a situation in our life where maybe there is a problem and there are two three alternatives to that ways of reaching that particular solution to that particular problem. Now when we have alternatives in our life and we are to choose amongst those alternatives which are present to us then comes the questions of decision making because we have to select a particular alternative based on certain parameters in such a way like it helps us to find the solution to the problem which is there. So, this aspect of phenomena is called decision and how we do it, the process that we follow for doing our decisions, arriving at our decisions is called decision making. Before again we try to find out the process of decision making, then we should know what are the types of decisions that people face in life. For that we will try to classify decisions required to be taken based on certain aspects. First type of decision that people generally take is called rational decision making and we are trying to focus more on types of decisions um, uh, like if we try to classify it in that way we can classify it accordingly whether these are programmed decisions or non-programmed decisions. When we are talking of program decisions, these are more or less routine decisions that we have to take and which are like repetitive decisions that we have to take in which maybe there is not much of variety regarding the problem faced for these types of decisions and um, there is a defined definite procedure for um, handling them. They are handled generally through set standard procedures that are and rules that are defined in the organization. So, these are routine decisions we do not have to expend much of our like thought processes for it and we generally try to follow a definite procedure stated well established procedure for doing this type or taking this type of decisions and it is generally done through mathematical models. When we are 
um, talking of non programmed decisions these are novel and unstructured with no established procedure for handling the problem so big, there there is an uniqueness in the problem with more of challenging aspects we do not know what are the possible alternatives maybe we can learn from some of the past aspects but it is not exactly like the past situation and we need to visit and revisit the problem times and again so that we can find out amongst alternatives which is the best um, solution and or how to reach a particular solution so these types of decisions are called non program decisions now we will find as people move up the sorry, level of hierarchy in the um, organization what may happen is that like people in the position of uh, lower management cadre they are generally concerned with program decision making people who are in the middle of the ranks in the organization they generally mostly it's not for all time they also mostly do program decision making where there is less of challenges novelty in the decision making process but as you move up and there there is and we concern more with the top management position their people are more concerned with decisions which are challenging in nature which are non programmed in nature and there is lot of uncertainties in those decision making so after we have classified the types of decisions into these two categories of what is a program decision and what is a non program decision we'll move into a decision making process which is called rational decision making process and um, these types of um, um, decision making process is more concerned with uh, like um, establishing specific goals and objectives and and uh, trying to find out uh, solutions for it so um, in this case what happens like in the um, we can think of the best decision making process as as a rational one which um, tries to f- maximize the value which is present and max- um, value maximizing choices and taking care of the constraints which are there in life it re- relies on number of assumptions that are been made and it takes care of things like we know all the possibilities which are there alternatives which are there in that decision making process so first the different steps which are concerned with rational decision making its first step is establishing specific goals and objectives and trying to measure the results for it so objectives what they will do they will describe the desired outcomes and state for how to reach those outcomes when we are talking of problem identification and the definition part of that problem identification and these problems come to light when there is a gap in the performance level of the specified organizational objectives and what actual levels of performance are reached by the organization so when we find there is a gap in performance we know like there is a problem somewhere why this problem and like how what happened so that we couldn't reach the objective as uh, as was defined next step in this decision making process is to define the um, types of problems and if you see the types of problems can be hierarchically classified 
into these three types. One is the routine problems, day to day problems which are like problems that you find in your day to day operations and in how you try to uh, solve it. Next is when you are talking of some crisis situations occurring and you have to answer those crisis situations. So, the, the, there is where the, you find like there is a gap happening and, and you try to answer those issues. Third type of problem which is like when you talk of uh, finding um, opportunities. Here maybe um, what happens you try to find out how you can explore the field which is there outside your organization in the environment and you can better your um, performance or how you can utilize the assets that you are having in terms of the people and the resources that you are having and how you can use these resources to um, tap certain field which is maybe still not very crowded in the environment that is where you try to know what you where uh, your opportunities lie and in what sense. So, these are the problems which if you take opportunities to be one of the problem situations these are to be found voluntarily you have to fi find these opportunities and then you have to prepare yourself for uh, like so that you can maybe prepare yourself keep yourself ready for grabbing these opportunities that, that are uh, present in the environment for you. So, these are the three types of problems if you are trying to classify problems according to their natures and complexities. When we are talking of defining the problems it, it may be hindered uh, definition of the problem um, uh, is hindered by three major factors. So, perceptual one is the perceptual problems where um, where, where we try to select information um, so we selectively perceive the problem based on certain information and what sometimes it does is distorts the meaning of the problem at hand. This may happen due to like the person perception and the problems like of, of, of the person who is viewing this problem and the alternate is based on his or her personality pattern, attitudes, values. The person may see the problem in a certain light, see some parts of the problem and may miss out some other parts of the problem or highlight on the um, selectively perceive only the negative part of that problem and try to overlook or generally cannot visualize the opportunity in that uh, situation. So, that results in perceptual problems and how it affects the definition of a particular problem. Generally what happens again like sometimes we jump to quickly uh, towards a particular solution like defining a problem uh, as if what what could be the solution for this particular problem is instantaneously known and people try to jump to solution without taking into consideration the different alternatives that could be present, the situational variables that could be present which can act as constraints in the decision making process and help to materialize one of the alternatives chosen and maybe the other alternative will not you know it, it is not possible to go for the other alternative keeping in view the constraints which are there for the decision making. But sometimes people do not give time for all these factors and they try to jump to particular solution which if this hasty decision is taken sometimes it may backfire in the sense your solutions are not working or you find it has not, it was not timely enough to take these decisions or because people were not involved you did not take care of the constraints which are present in the decision making process. So, this is another of the hindrances when you are talking of types of problems and the hindrances that you face.
Mm. Third is sometimes what happens, we do not go to the root of the problem, but we take the symptoms of the problem as a problem. So, what happens like if, when, when there is a certain uh, problem in the organization, what uh, they, there could be various symptoms which expresses people's dissatisfaction with the issues at hand or why they are not reaching certain uh, objectives. So, what if, if we are concentrating more on the symptoms and take the symptoms to be the problem, we are not going to the root of the problem and trying to find out the solution for it. What we become more engrossed with is the working with the sub symptoms and maybe trying to clarify issues related with the symptoms, but the root of the problem remains and maybe in certain other situations for temporarily if we take care of the symptoms and we handle it, maybe temporarily we can find answer to a particular problem. But, at is, but because the root remains and the main cause is not removed or answered to and we do not find alternatives to it, it may again come to the surface again some at a later point of time. So, these could be the three hindrances while, while we are talking of hindrances while we are facing in defining the problem. Number one, there could be distortion in how we define the problem itself by whether we take it something to be a problem in the negative sense and we uh, do not try to feature, we do not try to see the positive points of it. Second is um, when we try to jump to a very hasty conclusion solution without going through the steps of decision making. And third is when we mistake some symptoms for a particular problem and do not try to go deep into the roots of the particular problem and find out what are the reasons for it. So, what we generate may be some superfluous solutions and not answering the root of the problem. So, these could be the three hindrances in the three factors which act as hindrances for defining the particular problem. Next step in the decision making process, um, what happens is we have to establish the priorities of uh, dealing with the uh, problems. And like if you have two, three, four problems at a particular time and we have to and there is a scarce resource as far as decision making is concerned in terms of time, money, involvement of people and all these things, then maybe we have to prioritize the issues um, based on certain parameters and try to find out which are the problems which needs um, immediate attention to be solved. Like when we are talking of <coughs> selecting the problems which requires immediate attention to be solved, maybe we are focusing on three ways of choosing those problems. One is based on the urgency of the problem, which is if we are under very time pressure and that problem has to be answered immediately, then that is called the urgency of the problem. What is the impact of the problem? If it has a very in-depth impact in the organization's performance, like day-to-day -day performance or even performance uh, like some aspects of the performance which are very much <coughs> related to its positioning in the competitive field, then the, these impacts we have to take care of. Third is growth tendency, whether, whether there is a chance of this problem to come up again in future, whether, whether these problems if not taken care of now uh, can like again generate in future with maybe further intensity. So, this becomes further aggravated. So, these are the three conditions which determines three yardsticks to determine if two, three problems are there simultaneously they, they exist in the organization, which are the problems which are to be attended first in terms of uh, problem solving and decision making regarding those problems. <coughs>
Mm. Next step in dealing with the problem solving is of course uh, consideration of the causes of the problem. So, like like we are telling, if you remember, like when we are talking of the not going by the symptoms of the problem, but trying to go to the root of the problem. Like if we are considering the cause of the problem, why why this is so, and what is the exact problem, and why this is happening, may, maybe we try to find out the exact cause of a particular problem, and it helps to solve. It helps to make a better problem statement and find solutions to it in a much better way. So, and next step is finding alternative solutions to the uh, problem. So, when we are talking of alternative solutions to a particular problem, first is it should be um, number one guided by the objectives that are set by the organization. So, if you are to reach the objectives then um, what could be the um, possible steps to reach that objective in a much better way. So, next is uh, the alternatives should be judged in terms of their potential positive and negative outcomes. Like it is not enough to take or decide about or think about a particular alternative. Alternative should also always be stated in terms of the positive and negative outcomes. Like if you have chosen some path uh, what 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 you gain by choosing that particular path and what are the negative consequences if you take that particular path for a decision making though for problem solving those are the things that should be um, clearly stated should be should be there in your mind before you decide on zero down on a particular alternative to be taken um, next is what like when you are talking of the um, uh, cho choice of an alternative and the probable outcomes that it uh, it should be leading to then then we have to judge about the probability of the alternative and its whatever possible outcomes that we are thinking of it so one is what point one is that of certainty, how much certain you are that one particular alternative that you, that you, have, you, you are thinking of will definitely lead to um, some type of uh, outcomes, whether whether either it is positive or negative in nature. How, how, how much surety you have about the probability of certain outcome. Next is when you are talking of uncertainty, um, like when when you really have no probability, no knowledge of the probability of certain outcome, you have you know the alternatives. Maybe it's, this is a new alternative that you are thinking of. You have not tested it. You do not know. Like it, it has never been tested by others. Also, it's a totally new thing that you are working on, and you do not know the probability, and you are very uncertain of, like whether it will lead to a positive outcome or a negative outcome. Mm. And uh, next is when you are ready to take certain risk in the sense you have some mental idea about the outcomes whether uh, positive or negative in nature, but you are not very sure about the weightage of these two outcomes like whether it will lead to more positive outcome or negative outcome and maybe mm, you want to take certain risk by just uh, working with those alternatives and try to find out like whether actually it leads to a positive outcome or a negative outcome. So, next step is um, decided as like the um, solution seeking phase. So, solution selection in this what happens like if the problem at hand is with multiple objectives and again um, 
what happens like if there are multiple objectives which are maybe not too much um, related to each other if it is to be reached simultaneously at certain point of time then what happens maybe we cannot reach multiple objectives simultaneously if um, they are they demand different if they demand different priorities from you uh, so what happens at this time is again we have to um, choose between these objectives in the sense like um, which which is the one that that we are going to optimize and um, which is the one maybe like um, which is the sub optimized so um, what happens like the situation mentioned over here like um, sometimes in search for profit and in search of organizational objectives um, we sometimes we do it as a sense of the uh, societal objectives and now like if you are talking of sustainability issues and we are talking of taking care of the environment people and also the profit making objectives like it some organizations may find it very hard to balance all these three objectives if they are not uh, able to establish the um, link between like how how can we maximize profit also while take while maximizing the other two things also like the um, concern for the environment and the concern for the society at large if you are not able to balance these three issues so um, what happens we may find like we are at crossroads of decision making and 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 we may neglect or sub optimize one of the objectives and try to um, optimize the other things so what what um, Mm, what may happen in this case so in order to and uh, find a balance between the multiple objectives so that all can be reached simultaneously and we do not neglect one of the objectives while giving much priority to the other objectives so instead of optimizing for mm, certain objectives mm, what we can go for is a decision making which is more satisfying in nature is selecting the alternative that that will help the acceptable um, standards um, and which which will help to uh, answer to uh, take care of all the objectives which are decided for at a particular point of time so maybe we do not it's not possible for make an optimal decision making what we go for is satisfying decision making when if you have to take care of the multiple concerns multiple objectives which are there set for a, at a particular point of time and if you have to reach all these objectives simultaneously next is when you're talking of implementation so that is where people are involved and decision making must be transformed into behavior while while we are talking of implementation and how people react to it how they visualize the problem how do how do they act on the alternatives and how they reach the solutions are where where it's concerned like implementation of the decision and when you're talking of um, follow up this is the stage where we are, we are trying to see the effect of decision making it's not enough to uh, it's not enough to just decide about something and uh, then maybe implement something whether whether we have decided what what is correct or not and whether it's working or not these factors can be only understood when we are measuring these things where we are taking a follow up of the decision making process and so and whether you are taking a review of it and trying to uh, see it like whether it's working or not and trying to improve on the processes like um, find out where where we are lacking and how to improve on those issues and find out the um, 
gap between what is the desired uh, result and the actual result and we try to fill up that gap. So, this whole chain completes the decision making process. Now, when we are um, talking of um, taking some actions as far as decision making is um, concerned, then there, there could be few actions like um, changing the implementation like how it has been implemented on who are implementing it and changing the implementation uh, strategy like how it is getting implemented, at what time, whom do I choose to implement my strategy or, or if it is not possible, we may think of changing the objective which is very unrealistic if, if we have uh, in the sense established the objective with much of more environmental scanning and discussion, internal discussions and taking those decisions at the very strategic level. If those, if the signals are not that we have decided on an objective which is too too much which is unrealistic in nature or then it is not proper to go for a change in objective per se. If it is not too much out of place and your review signals like the original problem that you chose for the objective that you chose for was, was not properly selected. Next is mm, mm, change the whole decision, changing the decision means uh, going for another alternative and or like reactivate it from start like looking from the reviewing the situations from the start itself like what could be the other alternatives possible, did we choose a proper alternative, did we do a proper survey of the solutions that could be done before we jump into solution, have we taken care of all the constraints that were present and then after reviewing maybe we reactivate the whole decision making process. This could be the possible actions which is there when we take after we try to fill up the gap of the desired result and the actual result. Mm. Alter. So, these are the possible steps of um, rational decision making, but one of the points of um, uh, like um, rational decision making um, uh, which is maybe very hard to reach is to know all the possible alternatives that are present to a particular objective at hand. Um, because what happens sometimes people um, rarely have all the information they need or want and people do not have access to it or, or certain times it is not possible to predict all the consequences. So, um, and sometimes people adopt to like um, early solutions. So, hmm, early solutions because they appear to be quick fixes sort of thing and um, they help to like um, select prop, um, reach some conclusions, early conclusions and we maybe do not have to go to the complexity of the issues. So, um, um, and what happens like uh, there could be conflicting goals of different constituents. When these things happen then what, what we are may be shifting from uh, a complete rational model of decision making to what is known as a bounded rationality model of uh, decision making. So, because in some cases <coughs> like um, you are making a complete rational decisions will is very time consuming and costly and problems have to be answered fast, solutions have to be arrived at. So, it is not possible to go for all these search for all the alternatives and then reach a particular solution. So, what, what is the 
best next alternative to um, go for um, decision making which is um, not so much of rational but like when which we talk of as um, like bounded rationality model bounded model rational decision making model where where it is somewhat rational in nature but it's not too uh, too much of rational and we can arrive at solutions somewhat at uh, lesser cost um, lesser cost and faster than when you're talking of rational model of decision making another influence uh, another types of decision making which is least rational in the sense like when you are talking of intuitional models of uh, decision making where what happens mm. Mm. where well, th- this is based on um, it, it's based on um, experiences and and years of experience and intuitions people that have gathered and it is based on distilled sort of experiences so um, it is in it, it is sometimes emotionally charged also emotional process of decision making so what happens like when you are talking of um, intuitive decision making maybe it's not um, maybe it's not rational in nature but it doesn't mean like like it is um, wrong it's 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 wrong because um, or or it, or it doesn't always mean like it um, acts opposite to the way of rational decision making so mm, mm, what happens is intuition is something uh, that it it depends on um, experiences that have been gathered through mm, years reasoning that have been developed through years and we have tested it and it's it's there lies there in an unconscious level and and we try to utilize it when when we are arriving for a certain decision it doesn't mean like it's a very stereotypical decision but yeah we have a certain foresight and um, um, hindsight like when you're talking of intuitive decision making and sometimes it works because again it, it depends on the storehouse of knowledge um, though and so because it sometimes um, not quantifiable people do not try to like rely to on this intuitive decision making but it works and it's some so what what is the best option could be like um, to work for both going hand in hand for both rational decision making processes and intuitive decision making processes next we can concentrate uh, like after we know this the different types of decision making processes we can like um, try to find out what are the common errors or um, biases in uh, decision making what what we find is that like one of the like most common error is um, like our our bias if you may tell is a bias of uh, over confidence like um, sometimes what happens we are over confident that whatever path we have chosen alternative that we have chosen is going to yield result and uh, we we are over confident of our ability to make a um, correct decision we don't want to consult others we don't want to go for searching for solutions and we rely too much on our ability for decision making and that bias is called bias for over confidence next type of bias is which is called an anchoring bias in anchoring bias what happens uh, if we take on initial course of action so we go we become hooked to that alternative if you can use that term we become hooked to that alternative and we do not like to concentrate we do not like to visit 
other alternatives that may come up in the latter part of the decision making. We try to reject those alternatives and we remain like loyal to the initial alternative that we have chosen for ourselves for particular decision making. So that, that, that bias is called anchoring bias. Third bias which is present which is called confirmation um, bias. In that type what happens like um, we try to seek, uh, seek out information which, which tries to reaffirm the alternative that we have chosen and we try to um, reject those um, alternatives which are may, may be giving us a feedback like like our chosen path is not working. So we only try to stick to those alternatives which reaffirms the our decision that we have taken initially and we try to reject those options which are uh, giving us a, a different feedback. That is called a confirmation bias. Next when you are talking of like Mm. Uh, availability bias. In availability bias what happens? There is a tendency for us to mm, base our judgment on things, on information that is readily available. We do not want to like work for in searching for the alternative. Something is readily available to us and we want to utilize only those information for decision making. We do not want to like work for for finding other pos alternatives which could be there we do not want to like think of generating other alternatives also that that part of the bias is called um, availability bias another type of bias which is there which is called escalation of um, commitment in escalation of commitment what happens like the it is an increased commitment escalation is an increased commitment to a previous decision so in spite of realizing fully like there is a negative uh, feedback that we are getting of the original decision that's taken and and somewhere we um, need to change but because we chose a decision and initial decision and much of our emotional involvement was there in the decision that we chose. So this part we go on um, showing our loyalty to that decision because if, if we are changing our decision at a later point of time and maybe realizing the negative part of the thing then what we are doing may be negating our original decision which is going to lower our self esteem or be a threat to ourselves. like maybe at that point of time we were not good decision makers. So, so to prevent that threat to the self what people do in many cases like they go on escalating their commitment to a particular initial decision taken realizing fully well that in certain point of time like it is not working and it needs to be changed. So that this part, this type of decision making is called escalation of commitment. There is another type of error which is called randomness error. In randomness error what happens? The mm, there is a certain belief about which people nurture like they can decide for everything possible on earth they can even change random events they are they that much powerful the good decision makers that they can take care of the random issues also so this this is again called a type of error which is called randomness error next part of error which is more important over here is like when we are talking of risk aversive behavior. What happens sometimes people reach a particular solution uh, because they do not want to take much risk with the alternatives which are um, based more on uncertainty. We do not know what are the possible outcomes to it. We do not have any first hand information about the weightage of the outcomes like 
whether we get a more positive outcome or a negative outcome for it. So, mm, mm, so what people want to do is they try to prefer um, less risky solution in the sense and um, and and they settle for a moderate outcome as far as the gains are concerned. So these are in certain cases some of the errors which are involved in the process of decision making. Next we will try to focus on some of the um, behavioral components of the decision making or rather we will talk of the behavioral influences in decision making. One of the primary influences that we have in the uh, decision making uh, process and uh, is like um, is that of like um, the values like people are having and these values are guidelines when which are used in confronting a particular situation and which requires a choice. So, sometimes values come in place and try to help us to decide like um, which is the best alternative for a particular problem. So, um, uh, what is done is establishing the objectives based on the uh, and trying to make value judgments, selecting the opportunities and try to find out which is the best alternative based on whether the what is the giving weightage to the objectives based on its value dimensions, trying to look into the alternatives based on its value judgments again like which is more virtuous in nature and how it adds values to the organization. And after that we select a particular alternative and then when, when it comes to implementation values actually influence the means chosen for implementation whether you take an ethical route or not all this will be guided by the values that influence the um, implementation phase. So, again evaluating and control the value judgments will define like what are the corrective actions that needs to be taken. So, person's value system and whether that influences his decision on taking for the organization that matters a lot specifically when we are choosing for the objectives, when you are choosing for the alternatives and when you are choosing again for how to implement this decision making process. We have already discussed about the propensity of risk which is like when we talked about risk if ever signals this is a part of personality characteristics which tells like how much risk taking we are. So, so sometimes we find people are more risk prone and in other cases they are risk averse which decides their propensity for taking a particular risk. And if you are de deciding on a particular outcome based on the losses or gains, so um, it actually um, it is the person's idea of what are the actual losses or gains and whether she, he or she will opt for that decision or not based on the um, propensity or that he or she has for taking a particular risk in life. Next is point important point is um, that of uh, potential for um, dissonance in that um, what happens is like cognitive dissonance as well as like when when there is a disharmony existing between the decisions to be taken when the, there is an objective and uh, Mm, the decisions to be taken, the alternatives and people are to reach those objectives, alternatives and it is not maybe disharmony exists between them due to the person's attitudes, patterns and um, belief system. So, um, there may be a conflict 
between what that person actually believes wants to do and what was decided and that may result in anxiety and um, uh, and th this um, is again intensified feeling is intensified when there were a number of alternatives which could be chosen but some of the alternative was chosen um, based on certain other criteria and um, we had to forego many alternatives with uh, some of the favorable features because this was chosen due to some other constraints. So that results in cognitive dissonance on the part of the person who is not able to identify with the decisions made in the organization. So what is happening over here is um, in rather than to um, um, admit the mistake that has happened, what the person tries to do, uh, we try to seek support like which, which helps to support the decision information which seeks to support the decision. So we try to distort other information to support the decision. Um, and we take a less favorable view of the opportunities or the alternatives that we did not take and underestimating the importance of negative aspects. So what we try to do, we try to um, reduce the negative aspect of the decision making um, by um, working on all these steps like either um, looking at other alternatives giving less importance to them or giving less importance to the negatives in the present decision that has been done. And in that way, we want to reduce the dissonance that has been there because something we really wanted to do and some decision that has been taken and that does not match with our attitudes, values, qualities and other things. Um, we have already discussed about um, escalation of commitment which occurs and uh, Mm, how people are moving towards that commitment. So mm, an, another part which, which is very important for mm, decisions mm, taken is like the culture and its influence on behavior. So and, and it influences the decision making process. Then, then we have certain biases which are called like hindsight biases where, where sometimes we um, state like we knew, we knew from for certain from earlier times only like this is going to happen. This we, some like if you take a survey and you find specifically among the experienced people like um, as if they, they can predict the outcome of a happening before that occurrence itself like, and that is called the hindsight bias. Like even something has happened, and you try to take the you try to take the opinion of these people. They will always say, "I knew that this outcome is going to happen, but maybe you would never listen to me. You never took my opinion on these things." This part of bias is called the hindsight bias. Next, what happens? There, there could be individual differences in decision making regarding not only in the personality pattern but also differences in um, when we are talking of influence of gender in the decision making process. Um, sometimes like men and women think differently while, the, while they are going for a um, decision making. So um, when it comes to like uh, reflecting back on situations which which we call maybe like um, influences of um, like rumination while, while we are going back to the thinking of the problems before um, um, thinking of the past present and future and think think at the time length so reflecting at length so it's generally found like um, 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 uh, women ruminate more than men and they um, um, they are 
more um, likely to over analyze a particular problem uh, be before like um, they um, go for a particular decision and they um, maybe try to revisit it again and again before they arrive at a particular uh, solution. So, that that is where the people may vary. People also vary in their um, Mm. mental ability to make decisions. Sometimes uh, people are quick to learn from mistakes and they can um, take care of those mistakes in decision making while decision making. Sometimes people do not have that capability to learn from mistakes and they go on doing the errors time and again. So, people differ in their mental abilities also like while it comes to decision making process. Next, we will try to concentrate here more on the different decision making styles. What we find over here, we can classify uh, different decision making styles into four groups like directive decision making which are fast decisions which are focused on short term, analytic decisions which are careful analysis and tackle all types of problems, um, conceptual decision making style which are creative solutions, long range focus is there and behavioral decision making which is team working and conflict avoidance is what uh, what is the focus of this decision making style. And we can have uh, based on these four things we can have a combination from the premise like uh, it, it emerges from the premise that people differ in two broad dimensions in the way that they are thinking which is either logical or rational or serial way of thinking or creative or intuitive or holistic in nature and also there is a to tolerance for ambiguity. So, when we are talking of rational decision making and serial way of decision making, it is one way of thinking that we are looking into where we are analyzing facts and finding out alternatives going for calculative decision making taking on judging each of the alternatives and reaching to a particular solution. When you are talking of creative decision making is more of emotional involvement and working from intuitions, working from foresight, working from hindsight even and we arrive at a particular whole, taking care of the past, present and upcoming future and arrive at we take care of all these things very holistically and arrive at some creative solution. So, these are two ways different ways of uh, decision making when we is concerned of the way of thinking and also when you are talking of tolerance for ambiguity. So, some people have low tolerance and some people have high tolerance for ambiguity. So, when you are talking of directive style, these people have low tolerance for ambiguity. People who are on the analytic style have much a greater tolerance for um, ambiguity. People with conceptual style tend to have broad outlooks and normally good at taking creative decisions and generate several alternatives. People with behavioral style work well with others and readily accept suggestions. So, these are different things like we take when you are talking of these different two ways of thinking and the tolerance of ambiguity and how it leads to this decision making style. So, in the next session maybe we continue with decision making at the groups levels and organizational constraints of decision making, what are the different ways of making decisions and how we arrive at a proper decision regarding the problems at hand.